Hey guys, so this is the uh, bullied account creator functionality. So the objective here is uh, quick, you know, probably take, hopefully just take me like a week to implement this. Um, the idea is that a uh, user that just has an off-chain account, like an email password account, uh, they can accumulate void tokens in uh, their account and then once their pending balance reaches a certain point, they could then transfer those pending tokens <clears throat> into EOS and then we could buy an EOS account with them. Um, so in order to implement this function, we have an interface and a backend. Um, the interface uh, basically needs to make sure the user is logged in, display the uh, user's pending balance, display the account creation cost. Uh, do we want to upgrade an existing account? Like if you want to if you want to stake more RAM, uh, stake more CPU or buy more RAM. Uh, do you want to input a name or generate a name? Uh, input a public key, generate a public key, slash private key. Uh, set up the vote key. Um, so like we could have them automatically proxy their vote to the VoidCon proxy, for example. Um, that would be probably just a checkbox. And on the back end, uh, we want to uh, calculate the account creation cost, uh, take the pending balance from the user as payment, uh, trade the void for EOS, or pull from existing EOS balance. And the idea here is like, we don't just immediately sell all the void that goes into the contract. Maybe uh, some people uh, want to buy OTC or we put it in a reserve or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try not to make it too complicated. Execute account creation transaction based on user input. So basically the user authorizes it with their email password. They don't need a ES account to authorize it. And do we want this to work for users that already have an EOS account? So you could just send your void from an EOS account to make a new one. Uh, would be cool, but it's not necessary, so it's not a priority. And, uh, oops. So take pending balance from user segment. No, that's not done yet. All right. So what I have done is I have calculated the account creation cost so I'm just going to show how that works, actually. So I have um, account create stats. Yes. So this is a cron task, cron job. And basically what it does is it, uh, this is the initialization function. Basically all it does is it gets the price of RAM um, finds how much uh, from the ES blockchain because the RAM price changes. Uh, this whole task runs about every three minutes. Uh, gets the RAM price, finds how much uh, EOS it costs to buy one kilobyte of RAM, multiply that by three. This actually needs, needs to be four. Uh, minimum RAM is about four kilobytes. Uh, create an EOS account. <clears throat> the, so that's how much it costs to create an EOS account. It actually costs a little bit more than that. The price data is right here. So I'm getting the Boyd price and the EOS price in USD slash EOS. And basically I take the account create. Uh, so the account create cost is the cost to create the account plus 20% uh, divided by uh, the price of Boyd. So this basically gets me right here, the account crea creation cost in Boyd tokens. And so I have all the variables I need, I package them up into a JSON object, and that gets sent off into the database. And then the front end can query that information and display like, hey, this is how much it costs in Boyd to make an account. And I'm going to go ahead and run it down here for you, just so you have. Do I have it in here yeah, somewhere? Yeah, account create stats. 
So basically what it says right here is um, finds the price. Uh, so basically it's going to cost about 12,000 void tokens to make an EOS account. Uh, that's probably going to actually end up being like 15 to 20. Because um, there's a few other things you need to do. So that's fairly reasonable. Um, yeah, maybe two weeks of running the app with like a standard computer, you'd be fine. Probably less than that for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, it just takes that data, puts it in the database, and then my front end queries it. So that works. Take the pending balance. Yeah, so I have to figure out how to take the pending balance from the user as payment. Um, I actually already made uh, progress on the front end, so I'll show you that. Uh, make sure the user is logged in. I believe that works. So, doo -doo -doo. Uh, all right, so here's the interface uh, that I were, uh, was working on yesterday. Uh, create EOS account. Um, you can now generate EOS accounts directly from your void pending balance. This means anyone can now earn an EOS account just by generating void power with their CPU cycles. If you have an existing EOS account with void tokens, you can use those tokens to generate a new EOS account as well. On the left, you create with an EOS account. On the right, create using your pending void balance. So you can see here, I'm logged in and it's displaying how much pending uh, tokens I have. And it says, confirmed, you have enough void to create an EOS account. And then you can click create EOS account. So I'm logged in. What does it do when I, okay. Oh, well, actually this is busted. So, yeah, npm run dev. This is running. So, this is like my development server for. Come on. Okay. So, it looks like this is not supposed to be displayed if I'm not logged in. So. Account that is the pending, pending balance card. So, really, I think this whole thing needs to be you have enough. This whole This whole area, this whole section should be wrapped up in a div. This whole section should be wrapped up in a div if there's no reason to display any of this if you're not authenticated. All right, so that's that's what I was going for. Okay, and this is just a shortcut to the login screen. Login. Boom. Okay. Log out. Nice. Create ES account. So next. So make sure user is logged in. Display user pending balance, that is working. Display account creation cost, that is not implemented yet. So I will do that now. So to do that, I need to set up an endpoint, which is gonna be a query. So these are all the queries on the back end. Get teams, get pending work units. Oh yeah, I didn't import that. Um, let's delete that. Proc 
proxy info. This is not really the best way to organize it, but I don't care. Um, get Okay, try. And what I want to do is actually pretty basic. I'm actually just going to get the yeah, actually, the last. I'm actually just going to get the last time that this cron task was run. And I just want to get the results and create it. Uh, probably not even need to create that. Let's be fair. RAM cost. So this is the cost to create an EOS account in RAM. And then uh, calculated in void. So that's the number I want. And so all I'm gonna do is take that query Wait. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to grab the first thing in that list. And I just want to send that as a JSON. So that's actually all I have to do. And then I'll just say when this is mounted, I will. Is mounted really the right place to put this? I, I never really. This is the thing about view is that I always. I never really feel like I know exactly where I'm supposed to put stuff, like how I'm supposed to organize it. Um. So I end up organizing it in a way that changes over time. And I wish I could just organize it the way I want to, but Vue doesn't support every way of doing things. I don't get it. It's fine, but yeah. All I need to do is this.api dot get account create stats And 
actually just want to display it above. You can now generate an ES account. Yeah. I thought it would be cool to have it in a box above everything else. be like h4 dot h3 dot text center and this would be not like that false that's not the response that I was expecting whatsoever I'm gonna be clear with you there false what even um, is there an error or uh, get account create stats looks like I'm not getting a response Let's try and get a log out of here. So, I mean, I should see something in the log here, undefined. Really? Oh, but it's an array with one thing in it. Oh, I know. I know what the problem is. Uh, I just have to wrap this. Ah. And then I can do this. Yeah. Cool. All right. Wow, that is so big. That's what she said. Okay. Create stats dot results dot gram cost dot void. Can we not? I feel like I'm going to have to use that a few times, so I'm just going to make it a computed property. Which basically means that it just takes something and returns a thing. And it's just to make it a little nicer.
Do I really need to show decimal places on this? I think no. And then void. I might even want to show a nifty little logo next to it. Let's do it. Let's show a nifty little logo. This is why I don't get any shit done. Row. Um, column dash auto. Image. Probably like something like that. And then something like that. Um, items that center and where what's the URL for my uh, my void copy image address it what's going on with the spacing here there we go and why is this so tall because I have a minimum height. Let's make it like 150. What? Two hundred is fine. I just I have all this uh I feel like this is too big or something. There we go, account creation cost. Right there in your face. And uh, why didn't I just say format? Um, it's too tall. I I just want it to be like a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty pixels tall. Yeah. Yeah. That's I. I make the um, and then not really. It's just gonna look weird. No, looks fine. I mean, I would like it to be like kind of centered better, but. Uh, 
That's fine. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Um, create. All right. So basically, I show the account creation cost if the You know what bothers me is that uh, there's some kind of a padding or something, margin on this. Yeah, that was really bothering me. Jesus. Beautiful. Wow, oh, that looks a lot better. All right. Okay, so visually, visually, this is kind of how it draws your eyes. Create EOS account. This is easy to read, but it's smaller. <clears throat> Next thing your eye goes to is the account creation cost. So you're like, okay, so it has a cost. And then here I'm seeing that I have a pending balance, which is higher than the cost. I need to... The thing that I use to determine that is just stubbed in. So let me find um, user pending is greater than void cost. Yeah. That's uh, Jesus, that's annoying. Um, we can just format it in the uh, UI. Yeah, so basically it's a string because it has like commas and stuff in it. So I couldn't parse it properly to determine if it was correct. Um, so what I need to do is just Uh, format it in the interface instead of in the code so I can still parse it as a number very easily so you have enough pending void to create an EOS account <clears throat> you have enough pending void to create an EOS account. And if you do not, then what? It should say you This should just be else. It's really just a binary thing. Um, 
red. So uh, this stuff all needs to match. This is going to be like close. Void to create an EOS account. And then I would even do earn more void by generating void power. It's a hint like all is not lost okay don't get discouraged you got this you got this Spacing is kind of weird. Uh, it's a little sloppy, but it's also like utilitarian and informative. And I believe it will work on mobile. falls apart. I kind of just want to hide that one right now. Otherwise, I'm just going to get distracted. Yeah, yeah. Creation cost, use pending void balance. There's my pending balance. You don't have enough, but I do have enough. You have enough pending void to create an EOS account. Now, when I click create EOS account, I think it is going to be a multi. Uh, multi-step modal that's really just going to be like three steps so that's fine 